folks. Dr. Mike Israel here for Renaissance Periodization Glute Growth Program. You wanted it. You just weren't ready to admit it. And now you're finally rubbing the tears from under your eyes. You hit a namaste moment. You're here listening to how to specialize on glutes. It's okay. Join the club. It's 2020, whatever. Glutes are in. But why would we be specializing on them? Can't we just train glutes in the concert of an overall well-balanced program? The answer is yes. But there's a couple reasons why you could want to specialize on your glutes. You just want your glutes to gl grow in relation to everything else. So you may think that your quads look pretty cool, your hamstrings look nice, but damn it, your glutes are just a little small. And if they were bigger, everything would be in harmony. A guy, the earth goddess, would uh, you know, bless you in her own special way which I'm sure is sexual. Um, by sure, I mean hope. Number two is if you do want bigger glutes, altering your program to limit the focus on some muscles can make the glutes bigger because somebody could just say, well, specializing, you just do more for the glutes and the same for everything else. Yes, but if you reduce the everything else, the glutes get even more recovery adaptive resource and then they can really grow and take off. And so you can just train everything normally, but at some point, you'll realize that prioritizing is a good idea. That begs the question of when do I know prioritization is something that I'm going to need? When do I know specialization is something I'm really going to need versus just training it all around? The question is this. With all of the muscles that you're training, glutes included, are you able to take each muscle close to its own performance limits towards the end of the mesocycle? Like the muscle itself is what's crapping out on me. My overall feeling is that I'm feeling great, but I just can't match my PRs and the muscle itself is tired and sore and beat up. It just needs a break. That's great. That's how you know you've taken a muscle all the way to where it's meant to go as far as stimulating growth. But if the fatigue is systemic, your biceps are ready to go, but you're just so goddamn tired from doing leg curls and squats and pull-ups and all this other crap you're doing in your program, then no amount of you know, training your biceps hard is gonna fix that because all of your hard bicep training at that point is just junk volume. You are unable to train hard enough to stimulate your biceps because the systemic fatigue is too great. And if you push hard enough to do that, systemic fatigue rises even more and it's kind of like a self-canceling phenomenon. So in that case, if you're not able to train everything with due diligence, let's say you've got eight major muscles of the body and you're only able to train seven on front burner, and if you add in an eighth one, everything kind of collapses, you need to take out the eighth one, put it on maintenance, and say, okay, seven is all I can train. And at that point, you know that you can prioritize, specialize on seven muscles at the same time. But as you grow bigger and stronger, it may be less than that. Top IFB pro physiques can probably only prioritize, really put their front burner, specialize on half of their muscle groups at the same time, with the other half going on maintenance volume, much less than normal, maybe a third of the total volume that they used to be able to do. And remember, that doesn't shrink those muscles. It just keeps them about the same size while your glutes, for example, are growing. And then later on, you can go back to normal training. So if we're choosing to specialize, we have to understand what that really means. And that's all in context for the glutes, but it works the same for every other muscle there is. First, specificity. You don't want to choose good exercises for the glutes. You want to choose great ones. Exercises, modalities, drop sets, supersets, et cetera, and repetition ranges that preferentially stimulate the target muscle. So for example, if lower rep sets of lunges really fry your glutes, but they don't hit your quads much, but higher rep lunges really hit your quads and your glutes are not nearly as hit, if you're really serious about glute specialization, you're going to do most of your lunging in the low repetition range that really targets your glutes. All of our best weapons forward. And because we want to use all of our best weapons when we're fresh, we're going to follow the idea of prioritization, which in any given session with multiple exercises, you want to train glutes relatively early in that session. Many days of the week, it should be first in that session. If you're really serious about changing something, you've got to do it fresh. Like if you are an elite artist and you want to really get your game up to where you're an unbelievable artist, you probably don't want to practice your craft when you're fucking dog tired from the rest of the day of work and other art you do for work and not your passion projects. You probably want to wake up early in the morning and get that shit done right when you're focused to make sure it's the best quality work. Same way, if you want to train your glutes, you can't say, oh, I do my normal shit and then at the end of a workout, I do three sets of frog pumps or something. You got to do glutes first maybe second in most of the days of training in which you do glutes. That way, they're always getting great workouts. Frequency. 
Generally speaking, higher frequencies work a little bit better than lower frequencies. Tragic for me to see people who are trying to get their glutes bigger, but only train glutes once a week. At least twice a week, maybe even three or four times is much better. Whenever your glutes are recovered, you should be training them again, generally speaking. Now, the glutes are a big muscle and they are involved in big, heavy movements that have a large amplitude and ton of weight used. The total work is really high and thus systemic fatigue is high as well. So when you are interested in really specializing on your glutes and going fucking hard, you should probably consider tuning down the volume to maintenance volume or a little bit above that for many other muscles of the body, especially other lower body muscles. If you are training your hamstrings like crazy, you may be able to also train your glutes hard. If you're training your quads like crazy, fuck, unfortunately, a lot of the times is when your glutes are going to be ready and recovered and good to go, your quads might be tired and sore from the quad work, and then your glutes never really have a fresh take. So yes, you can train glutes and quads and hams all really hard at the same time, but if you really, really, really want to put all your best weapons in and get the biggest glutes you can during the time that you're specializing on glutes, I would go maintenance volume with hamstrings maintenance volume with quads. It's actually quite easy because the glutes involve a lot of those muscles anyway. Not that many exercises or sets directly for those muscles. More work on the glutes. So not only are they getting a ton of work, but they're fresh and it's high quality work. All right. So when you are building your glute plan, just for one mesocycle, consider a training frequency of three or four glute sessions per week. Glutes are big and they're gnarly, so you could even start with two sessions a week or three. I wouldn't start with four. Eventually, you can work up to it. Ideally, of course, you train them fresh at the beginning of every leg day and on their own day. That's three days a week. The glutes can be the first thing you train. Awesome. As far as exercises, lunges are incredible for the glutes because they allow that super crazy stretch of the glute when that lead, led, uh, lead leg hits the floor uh, uh, a foot or two away from you. That is the real money maker. Lunges are incredible. There's a trillion different variety of lunges. Make sure you are stable. Make sure you are lunging very deep. Uh, one of the lunges is actually the Bulgarian split squat, which is just another type of lunge as far as I'm concerned. That's also great for the glutes. And the deeper you can go, the bigger the stretch, the better. That is a really good core for glute work in addition to deep wide stance work, which hits the glutes really well. So wide stance sumo deficit deadlifts, wide stance sumo squats. There is a technique alteration, which Jared Feather has talked about in many of our videos in which we train females for their glutes, in which how you execute those exercises can actually make your glutes a huge limiting factor. And the other way to execute those exercises means the glutes are not a limiting factor and you have to use way more weight to do the same thing. So I would clue in on those. Potentially, we'll have Jared do a little mini glute seminar on how to arrange your technique to hit your glutes. But if you do that properly, the deep wide stance work also works incredibly well. And of course, hip thrusts are, are very good exercises for glutes. Not some kind of magic that's necessarily categorically better than exercises. The good thing about hip thrusts is they're really one of the only exercises that emphasizes that peak contraction at the top of a glute. You guys ever had sex for a long time? It's all peak contractions, and then you legit have a huge glute pump. I should stop by accident. To those of you who have never had sex, refer to what pretend sex would probably be like and then get a pretend glute pump. Someday you'll have the real thing. I promise. Maybe. Maybe not. At least with a robot. Hopefully soon. That's my plan. All of my sex is theoretical. So, hip thrusts are great. Lunges are great. Some other options good we'll talk about in a sec, but wide stance work for glutes is a really, really good idea. Set numbers. Again, glutes are not special and a magical like almost every other muscle. Two to six sets per session for glutes. And whatever gets you a decent pump and a feeling like you worked out a bit and then go slowly from there based week after week upon your ability to recover and get sore, et cetera. I will say that if you haven't done walking lunges ever or in months, one set of lunges close to failure will give you what I like to call IOMS, instant onset muscle soreness. Your glutes get crampy and fucking weird. And if you do any more sets than that, you'll have DOMS in your glutes for like, I don't know, a week and a half or two, which is really stupid. So highly effective exercises like lunges, start with just one set and stop. Literally one set, that's your whole glute workout. Next week you can do two sets, then three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
So some of these exercises you really, really need to ease into, and lunges are a really good example of that. Loading and repetitions, whatever gets you your best SFRs, which, how do we tell? Tons of tension in the glutes, tons of burn in the glutes, close to failure, great pump in the glutes. It makes the glutes really tired and unable to perform, and it makes the glutes either really fatigued feeling, perturbed feeling, uh, and or gets them actual delayed onset muscle soreness. That's how we can tell where our best SFRs are, while at the same time minimizing how much joint and connective tissue disruption we feel. There's a big difference between the best SFRs for the glutes and shit you want to do. For example, every other girl in America seemingly hip thrusts 405 pounds. But last I checked, their glutes aren't that big, right? How come? Well, it's easy to leverage the exercise of the hip thrust in such a way that may not feel ideal for your connective tissues, but you can lift a shitload of weight in. And it's in the five to 10 rep range, so you can really lift a lot of weight. But if you had to be honest with yourself and ask, all right, after one of those sets, how do your glutes feel? Most people's answer would be like, I don't know. They feel fine, like they were trained, but it's not exactly getting in there and really zapping them. Well, what would? They say, well, like, if I really had to be honest, I would hold the peak contraction of the hip thrust for one or two seconds. I would do a slow recentric. I would do sets of, you know, 15 to 20 hip thrusts. And then that would fuck me up. My glutes would be dead. Well, that's the fucking point. And then you might have to use two plates instead of four plates for hip thrusts. You might have to use barbell walking lunges with 25s on each side of the barbell instead of 45s. But it's really cool to be Ronnie Coleman and do three plates for walking lunges. But the reality is it's just that's out, out of the cards for most of us. And glutes are a muscle in which the technical change in the exercise can really change what is being involved. Remember, anytime you do any kind of hip thrusting motion, your hamstrings, your adductors, your quads, your lower back can all help the glutes to some extent carry out that motion. And thus, if you just try to go for max force production, all those muscles will start to help and the glutes won't be working as much anymore relative to the other muscles. So the the stimulus rises a little bit for the glutes, maybe not even at all, rises a lot for the other muscles, but the fatigue rises a shitload because now you're lifting a fucking metric ton. Whereas if you really focused on the mind-muscle connection for the glutes, really chose a technique that blasts the glutes and nothing else, you get a ton of winnings as far as stimulus, very little fatigue to pay for it. The only thing you have to rationalize to yourself is why that girl over there hip thrusts more than you. But bitch gets curious, you just turn to the side and pull your shorts a little bit, and she's like, ay papi. Donde esta la gluta? See, I speak Spanish too, and uh, I have no idea what I said. But maybe Spanish-speaking folks can translate in the comments. That would be helpful. A little, uh, a little Rosetta Stone. I sure hope I said something. There is no avoiding hard training if you want to grow. But if you want to grow the most, your training needs to be hard and smart. RP Hypertrophy app will make sure you're progressing on track monitoring and adjusting your workout at all times. So for all that work you're doing, you can be sure you're getting the best results. Anyway, something I overheard Jared Feather talking about. In any case, again, same as most other muscles, if you do have an exercise for glutes that is really good in the five to 10 rep range, great SFR, and other exercises that are better for higher reps, Start the workout with a sets of five to 10, like if it's sumo deficit pulls or something, because you got to be fresh for heavy, but you don't have to be fresh for light and high rep. Get the heavy done first, light and high rep after. And if you have within the week, maybe three glute days, do your heavier work earlier in the week, moderate work in the middle of the week, and later in the week, do lighter work, really recover. That way your joints and connective tissues kind of get to recover the entire time and then get blasted again next time you train heavy progress through your plan is going to be very similar. You essentially want a set of baseline volume, which we talked about, sort of two to six sets for each session for the glutes. And then you see, okay, how is the stimulus going and how is my recovery going? So if you feel really strong next workout before to train glutes and you're not, you have no delayed onset soreness or anything like that, the next time you do glutes, you can add a set. So if Wednesday, I train glutes Monday, and Wednesday I'm feeling phenomenal, next Monday I go from three sets to four sets of glutes. Ideally, you want to heal just before you train glutes again. Train, get, train your glutes, get either sore or like pretty fatigued and tired. You're like, my glutes aren't sore, but like, fuck, I don't. I'm definitely going to underperform with hip thrusts and lunges. 
By the time you train glutes again, you're just recovered enough to hit that mini PR. You stuff as much volume as you can over time recover from. That usually leads to the best gains. Voila. If you are sore all the time, if you do lunges on Monday and you're still sore doing hip thrusts on Wednesday, too much, reduce the volume so that you heal on time. We don't want to train when we're sore. On occasion, it's okay, but it's not something you set up over the long term. Reps in reserve, three reps in reserve, like with anything else, you start, and then you progress by two and a half pounds or five pounds on the bar, 10 pounds on the bar, whatever it is, every week, a little bit on the bar, maybe add a repetition or two here every week, so that you're always making things a little tougher over time. Eventually, you hit failure on stuff, you're not able to match repetitions, deload, get rid of the fatigue, choose some exercises, repeat another mezzo, voila, that's all a program design. And while we're at it, what would a glute plan look like? I'm just going to show the glute exercises. I've integrated no quad or uh, hamstring training or anything into this. But basically, it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We have a sample plan here, right there. Monday, we start with barbell hip thrusts, sets of 10 to 15 reps, and 3 RIR. And then we do sumo pause squats for two sets of 5 to 10 reps. Now, hold on a second. Sumo pause squats, great glute exercise, but they're 5 to 10 reps, but they're second in the order, I thought you said five to 10 reps should be first in most cases, but in some cases, the stimulus to fatigue ratio is higher if you pre-exhaust with a lighter exercise so you don't have to go crazy heavy on a compound movement. Sumo squats get pretty fucking heavy, so if my glutes can be blasted with hip thrusts, which don't even affect most of my body, sets of 10 to 15 reps, that means my glutes are nice and weak coming into the actual sumo squat itself, and then when I do the squats, I do my super glute technique, and the glutes just don't need that much more to get going. It's like doing some flies before doing some push-ups. If you get through all your flies first, and then you do your multiple sets of push-ups, it'll be easier relatively to train your pecs versus your triceps because your pecs will already be pre-exhausted. Wednesday, okay, so we got basically five total sets of glutes on Monday. We come in on Wednesday. We do machine hip thrusts or glute kickbacks because uh, there's a, some good glute kick. Uh, glute kickback machines. I'm having trouble saying that for some reason. And afterwards, we do sumo paused deficit deadlifts. Again, the deficit means we have to lean over more. We get a huge glute stretch, especially if we do the sumo with the right technique. We'll reach our glutes really far back and focus all of our energy on bringing our hips back and then underneath us. It's actually mechanically really shitty leverage advantage, and your glutes have to get you out of there at a deep stretch, which means it's very stressful for the glutes. You do those deficit pause deadlifts like that. Again, that's another five sets for glutes on Wednesday. Really good stuff. Friday, the abductor machine. I guess it's called the bad girl machine because you open up your legs like that. Some normative sexual implications there I won't broach. But uh, in any case, the opening leg up, that actually is one of the functions of the glutes. Not a hugely major function, so you don't want to have your whole routine be the bad girl machine, but it's something good to pepper in there. It, it takes care of other parts of the muscle, maybe aren't hit well with other things. So you do that for three sets of 15 to 20 reps. And then, of course, barbell walking lunges, especially great once your glutes have been pretty exhausted. Two sets of 15 to 20 reps. Gee, that's a really good exercise. Get nice and sore. Take two days to recover. Come back again. Add a few more sets. Reduce the RIRs a little bit. Stay in the same rep ranges by adding a bit of load maybe a few reps here and there. It's week two, week three, week four, et cetera. At the end, we get to a sample final pre-deload week. And there you notice that we're still in the same rep range, but everything is at zero RER and the sets have increased substantially. Again, increasing sets is a matter of asking, am I recovered enough? And if you say, well, I'm for sure recovered enough, I could definitely do a set and still recover. You go to the exercises that, because remember it's two exercises per day. here. So if you're saying, okay, my Monday recovery tells me that next Friday I can add a set to my Friday workout, you might look and say, okay, I have the abductor machine and barbell walking lunges. Which one of those do I add a set to? The answer is whichever one for you at the time has a better stimulus to fatigue ratio. Not that hard to figure out. You should already know that in your program. You should be like, okay, well, I'm already doing six sets of abductor machine. There's no fucking way I'm doing another set of that. The SFR that last set will definitely suck because I'm already psychologically checked out, but I could do another set of barbell lunges. So I'll, instead of four sets, I'll do five sets. That's how it works. All right. How long can you specialize for on your glutes? Ideally forever. And actually you can do that. So you can do a whole training block of specialization, three mesocycles in the row. 
the mesocycle is progressively becoming focused on slightly higher ups because joints and connective tissues can't keep up if it's just stronger, stronger, stronger all the time. Potentially increasing the training frequency as your glutes get used to it. And of course, the average volume is going to go up as well. And incorporating different movements as the various movements lose their SFR rankings. So barbell walking lunges were a great movement for you in the first two mesos. By the third, they're not so great. and They're kind of weird on your adductor. Then you do some regular, you know, so let's say Bulgarian split squats or something with a deficit. Uh, all's well that ends well. And then voila, we're off to a really good start. So exercises that are no longer working, you replace. Exercises that are working great, you keep in. One whole block, which is three mesocycles, potentially something like 18 to 20 weeks. That's a lot of training. After that, you should do either a four-week low-volume resensitization phase or a two-week active rest phase. And then you can come back and do another block of glutes and just repeat that over and over and over. Or you can come back and do any kind of normal training because maybe, just maybe, your glutes are finally big enough. And JLo's insurance people came up to you and they were like, do you need that insured? Because damn daddy. And finally, somebody called me daddy. All right. If you need more information about how to do this, don't worry, we've got you covered in the links right below in the description. We have a free exercise video library where you can look up Jared Feather training his glutes. Isn't that a treat just by itself? There's a muscle group training guide, which includes the, the glutes. So if this video made some sense, but you want something physical to hold on to and read, then we've got that as well, all free. The hypertrophy made simple training videos. If you're like, what the hell is SFR? There's a video on that. Don't worry. Give you the whole grand architecture of how we look at hypertrophy training on this channel. It's so different than everyone else. It's not that different. Now, that's the free stuff. Not free stuff is the hypertrophy book. If you're a real super fucking nerd like me, you'd want to buy that shit. And of course, if you want to create a custom training template, but you need some architecture with which to do it, you can do it on our website. It's super valuable. It's not, we're not trying to rip you off. It's actually a good program generator. You can build whatever you want on it, and it's going to make a whole lot of sense. And remember, I still have a team of 19 butlers supervising, as of now, 27 Lamborghinis. I even have the old 1980s Countach and everything. It means something. It's a memorabilia. And if you guys want to support the Lambo Fund, buy more shit. If you don't like me having Lamborghinis, what the hell is wrong with you? Do you even support the American dream? In any case, folks, thanks for tuning in, and I'll vroom by you next time and leave you and your girlfriend with mud water on the side of the street as you hear and see and smell Lamborghini exhaust. <laughs>